So good afternoon, everyone. We are going to start today's session. And today is the last day of uh, this workshop, meta-analysis. And today uh, we will sh show you meta-analysis on uh, odds ratio, on effect size. I think as requested by one of the participants on hazard ratio and proportion. So there will be two breakout rooms. One breakout room will uh, be for the practice of mean duration with the outlier diagnostic, which we could not do yesterday. And then next will be on the odds ratio. And second uh, breakout room will be on how to draw Prisma flow. So there will be two breakout room activity. So could you guys do some practice at home yesterday? Chat, let me. I think nobody is right. Okay, so Dr. Subha Ranjan is writing yes. Okay, Dr. Subha Ranjan. So I'll again, uh, we will demonstrate it today and then you people can practice it in the uh, breakout room. So this was the uh, sheet which we have seen yesterday and we have shared with you people that uh, modified sheet because yesterday there was a problem in importing the sheet when you were importing it was showing some data missing or some, some command it was showing. So that was because of that some formatting issue of the Excel. So if something happens, you copy paste the data in new Excel and then try to import. So how we have done it, you will go to this analysis, go to this major, click on this mean difference, and then you put this study in the study label, number, group that is sample size, then mean, NSD of one group, number, mean, NSD of the other group. And by default, if you see, it gives you the model. You can change the model with the Dur Simon Lard. Instead of standardized mean difference we discussed yesterday, instead of this, we want raw mean difference because our interpretation will be easy then. For how much was the uh, duration? How much was the duration of the diarrhea? It was decreased in the intervention group. So I have like clicked this to raw mean difference. Then here I will go for the, in the plots. Apart from summary estimate, I want this model fitting weights also, which we discussed yesterday. We discussed about the random uh, model of fixed effect and random effect model. And we also discussed that generally in meta-analysis, since there is a lot of heterogeneity and the studies are from the diverse background, the population is different, intervention, follow-up, everything is not homogeneous. That's why it's better to go for a random effect model. So that model fitting weights, you have to click. You have to click this prediction interval. And mm -hmm. then, then there are other additional in. So this we have seen yesterday regarding the estimate, the lower and the upper bound. We have uh, like read about the tau. This is a standard deviation. Tau square is the variance. And between, between study variance is known as the tau. Then we have seen I square, which is the Higgins uh, heterogeneity statistics. And it uh, again, there is a classification like up till 25% mild, 25 to 50 moderate, 50 to 75 is high and more than 75 is not acceptable. And R square is uh, then uh, again, you calculate this Q statistics. And if it is significant, then you say that there's a lot of heterogeneity, which is there in your data. We have gone through this yesterday regarding the write-up. We have seen this uh, forest plot. We have understood the meaning of this prediction interval that it predicts regarding the future studies. So if there will be future study, you can see it is ranging from 56 to 10. So there can be a case where there will be an increase of 10 R in the intervention group if any future study will be conducted. This publication bias, we have seen that this is a fail-safe N. That means like 855 studies are needed with a null value to prove that 
this is not true and if it is significant then you say that there is no publication bias regarding these two rank correlation and regression if they are non significant that shows that there is no publication bias in case of a funnel plot if you see the x and y axis x axis gives you the mean difference and this dotted line this gives you the pooled estimates which is minus 22 so you can see here this is minus 22 and then these are the two confidence that uh, extreme values and if the studies are like symmetrically distributed along this then you can say that there is a no publication bias publication bias is should be reported only when the number of studies are more than 10 if the number of studies are less than 10 you don't uh, need to report for the publication bias now coming to outlier in the uh, additional option Although the Jamovi writes here, if you read this, the last which we discussed yesterday, that we will not discuss it now. That the examination of a studentized residual said that the ergodan two zero one five had a value larger than this, and other uh, uh, studies like Basu and again the same study, they should be considered overtly influential. so now we will do the sensitivity sensitivity analysis and we will not include the study in our uh, in meta analysis so currently the i square statistics if you can see it is 88% such case it is not desirable to go report for the meta analysis again if you click on this show plot influential diagnostic although jamovi has given you the hint which are the two studies which is like an outlier again in this influential diagnostic you can see generally we go for two diagnostic which is the standardized residual and the second one is the cook's distance so in both case you can see that this red one red color can you see it? which is the eight number study this red and if you go up this red so these are the two studies the eight number uh, i mean not two study these are the only one study and there was another study by basu so what you can do i just want to say sir okay so we will do uh, it one by one so for that you need to apply filter now how to apply filter so to apply for filter there is a option if you go to the data you can see there is a option of filter here so click this filter here and now you have to select the total row so here i have to select the row i have to deselect it so for deselection this is the command we will share this with you maybe i will share this in the chat box you can keep because i also forget this many times so there is a problem that let me share that so this is the command so whatever row you have to deselect you type row then bracket then the exclamation mark is equal to row which you want to deselect so i want to deselect eight so then i will put it i will make this active then you can see oh this is taking one i have to replace this with 8 so now you can see if i show you the data on this 8 which is the ergodan 2012 dollar it is showing like a cut sign here cut sign means now it will not include this in the analysis so if you have excluded this study then see what is the result so you see that if you see the i square now the i square has decreased very marginally by 2% now if you see the write up also now it is showing none of the study and now it is not showing that any other study is you no know, 
but if you uh, examine this again uh, the so now there is no study you can see here first number study probably more than 2 but again the value which the jamovi gives it is not an outlier similarly this is also not an outlier so even by removal of one study which was like a outlier and this also says that although the average outcome is estimated to be negative it is saying that examination of a studentized uh, residual reveal that none of the study has a value larger than 2.8 and hence there was no indication of i outlier according to cook's distance none of the study so that's why this is your final you have just removed one study did the analysis ha huh, again your measure has improved now it is showing minus 19 initially it was showing minus 22 so if you see the funnel plot now you will report that it is 22 hours decrease mean duration of diarrhea in case of a intervention or the children who got probiotic as compared to the control or the standard group model estimate model estimate let me see i think i have checked it to the no this is this one so this is uh, regarding the uh, what you see that sensitivity analysis now showing you the another on the same data set which is the uh, odds ratio so this we have taken the odds ratio snip from the article you can see the then let's say he has reported and we are taking it at fourth day so fourth day we want to take the number who Uh, like they they are taking like persistent of diarrhea so 11 children out of 64 were not reported diarrhea and in control 22 so no it is the reporting of diarrhea means the having diarrhea at fourth day so out of total 64 11 said that they are having diarrhea and in control group 22 said that they are having diarrhea similarly the other study which is the khan study fourth day out of total 210 because there are 210 in each group so they uh, no diarrhea so in control in control group 180 people said that they were not having any diarrhea at fourth day whereas all the intervention group they said that they are not having any diarrhea similarly the teran if you see the study of teran so here yes here uh, it is a median and iqr so we will remove this study because this is not the frequency this is not the rather this is the mean so i am not going to take this study again this is the din lesai which is the uh, rep, which uh, who is reporting that the percentage of children in diarrhea on fourth day this is 96 hours so we are taking fourth day so in this group which is saccharomyces boulardii it is 37 people out of 222 who had diarrhea and in control 39 out of 143 had diarrhea similarly the franca villa if you see table 2 uh, where they are showing the number so on fourth day 14 people were having the diarrhea out of 40 and 17 were having the diarrhea out of 50 richi again you can see total person in the uh, like in number is 33 in probiotic and 31 in placebo and percentage of diarrhea after fourth day it was like Eight people out of thirty-three and seven out of thirty-one. So this data we have, and in this case you can see that although in all these you can see they have given the risk ratio also. So either you can do the meta-analysis using the risk ratio, especially. because then it will be calculated based on the effect size here they have not given yeah here they have given the risk ratio so either you can go with the risk ratio or you can go with this 2 by 2 so the data set which we have entered in the jamo v okay excel this is your we have shared this uh, excel sheet and i think uh, jamovi file okay. also with you people so that in case of any problem you can directly start working on jamovi file 
So this, uh, these were the study. I think we had to remove this, na Tehran. I'll remove, select, uh, deselect that there. So uh, you can see like event in intervention, and this is event in control. This, these are the total number in intervention and control. So, similarly, the Khan study. So there are five studies, uh, which we can take if we want to do the go by the two by two table of odds ratio. So this is the data. This is again we have taken from that. Uh, art, uh, like uh, studies which we have included. So for mean and SD, we had 13 studies. But here, you only have 5 studies. So I'll go in this data set. I'll select that study of Tehran. Okay. So you can delete... Now there are five studies. So I'll go to the analyze. This is there. And in this major, I will select this dichotomous model. This one. Yesterday we worked on mean differences. But for two by two table of odds ratio, I will use this dichotomous model. In dichotomous, how will I go? I will put this study in the study label. Number of incidents in experimental group, that is the event in the this intervention group. And then number of incidents in control group. So event in control group. Then number total number of sample size in experimental group. And total number of sample size in the control group. And then you can see the other options. So here you have to uh, do one thing like in this case you can change the model. And... This actually in the background, it takes the log odds ratio. So it converts the uh, these values into the log odds ratio. And then, but because for reporting, you need this to be converted back. So that's why I will click on this back transform log odds to odds ratio. Because in the funnel plot, the value which you see that is of log odds. But here down the line, we, we will show you. Here you can see the odds. So like I will start explaining from this uh, place. So here you can see it is showing 0.69. That means if it is 0.69, approximately 31% less uh, diarrhea in case of an intervention group as compared to the control group. And this is significant. P value you can see. So this is significant. Heterogeneity statistics, if you see now in this case, the heterogeneity is less. It is 54%. So then you can report this meta-analysis. If you do it on mean and SD, and if 86% is coming, then you should not report. Minus, uh, minus sign basically shows that there is a reduction. Because here what it does, like intervention minus control, it does. So intervention generally has a lower, that's why it takes the minus sign. Minus sign means, like in the intervention group, there is a less... 31% less uh, duration, uh, not, it, it was not, I mean, 31% were uh, not having the diarrhea at fourth day in case of an intervention group. Or you can say like there were 31% less episodes of the diarrhea at the fourth day in case of an intervention group. And this was like, if you transform, back transform that, so I was discussing regarding this I square. So I square is 54%. Now you can see H square is low. Although even if it is more than one, we say that it is a, there is a heterogeneity. Definitely there is a moderate, slightly more than moderate heterogeneity. And this P value, you can see it is not significant. So because if it is more uh, less than 0 0.05, you say that Q statistics, the P value of Q statistics, you say that it is, not significant. So you can go ahead and report this meta-analysis instead of taking the mean one. And this is the back transformation of log odds to odds ratio, which is show, showing 0.49. So value which you were seeing here, I should not have reported that because this is a log odds. So I should have reported this one. I'm sorry, 0.49. This is the true odds ratio. And in this case, you can see like the intervention group has 0.49 times less chance of having the diarrhea at 
fourth day as compared to the control group or in percentage if you want to say you can say that intervention group had 51% less uh, <laughs> chance of occurrence of diarrhea at fourth day so this is how you can interpret the and in case of this you can see that there's no negative sign because the value is less than 1 so if the value is less than 1 you know how to interpret that means that particular intervention in, is acting as a protective so now probiotic is a protective for the persistence of diarrhea at fourth day yes now you can read this yes can someone volunteer to read first this first paragraph Although we are not going to report this, but still you should know. Yes, can someone read this? Anyone? Anyone from Ames Patna group? Uh, Ma'am, shall I read it? Uh, please, Dr. Parvati. Uh, the analysis was carried out using the log odds ratio as the outcome measure. A random effects model was fitted to the data. The amount of heterogeneity, that is tau square, was estimated using the Darcy-Monian uh, layered estimator. In addition to the estimate of tau square, the Q test for heterogeneity, Cochrane 1954, and the I2 statistic are uh, reported. In case any amount of heterogeneity is detected, that is tau square more than zero, regardless of the results of the Q test, a prediction interval for the true outcomes is also provided. Studentized residuals and Cook's distances are used to examine whether studies may be outliers or influential in the context of the model. Studies with a studentized uh, residual larger than the 100 into 1 minus 0 0.05 divided by 2 into kth percentile of a standard normal distribution are considered potential outliers. That is, using a Bonferroni correction with two-sided alpha is equal to 0 0.05 for case studies included in the meta-analysis. Studies with a Cook's distance larger than the median plus six times, the interquartile range of the Cook's distances are considered to be influential. The rank correlation test and the regression test using the standard error of the observed outcomes as predictor are used to check for funnel plot asymmetry. Thank you. So in the statistical analysis plan, you can write this, like how you are going to analyze the result. And then this will be included in the actual result. Yes, second paragraph. Parvati, you only continue. Okay, ma'am. A total of k is equal to five studies were included in the analysis. The observed log odds ratios range from minus 4.2646 to 0 0.0927, with the majority of estimates being negative, 80%. And the estimated average log odds ratio based on the random effects model was uh, hat mu uh, is equal to minus 0. Uh, 0.6976, 95% CI of minus 1.33842 minus 0 0.0568. Therefore, the average outcome differed significantly from 0, which is Z is equal to minus 2.1337, P value of 0 0.0329. The Q test for heterogeneity was not significant, but some heterogeneity may still be present in the true outcomes. Uh, 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 fourth quartile is equal to 8.7405 p-value of 0 0.0679 tau square is equal to 0.2627 and i square is equal to 54.2358 percent a 95 percent prediction interval for the true outcomes is given by minus 1.8892 to 0.4, uh, 0.4940 hence Although the average outcome is estimated to be negative, in some studies, the true outcome may be may in fact be positive. An examination of the studentized residuals revealed that none of these studies had a value larger than plus minus 2.5758, and hence there was no indication of outliers in the context of this model. According to the Cook's distances, uh, none of these studies uh, could be considered to be overly influential. Neither the rank correlation nor the regression test indicated any funnel plot asymmetry. <clears throat> P is equal to 1.1 uh, and P is equal to 0 0.0732 respectively. Thank you, Parvati. So you can see here that although 
it will give you the result of funnel plot but generally since the number of studies are less so you should not go for reporting the publication bias because at least 10 studies should be there to report for the publication bias so this is uh, in this case we don't need to perform any sensitivity analysis because you can see that there was no outlier so that's why you can give this result as a whole here you can put like if i see that you can show it in the diagram that prediction interval this one and since odds we take at the value of since here it is giving you the odds ratio which is 0 0.70 not giving the uh, rather you can say that back back okay. transformation this is the actual odds ratio 0.49 with the 0.26 and 0.94 with the upper and lower boundaries so yes this was for the dichotomous model so we have seen two types first is the mean differences which we have seen yesterday and did some sensitivity analysis today and then the dichotomous model and then effect size I think there will not be any breakout room for the effect size. I will demonstrate it on the uh, hazard ratio and the percentage. But before that, I think you should practice this once in uh, breakout room. And then we'll again come back to the main room. So Dr. Anand, can you please open the breakout room? Yes, ma'am. So the data sheet has been shared, both the Jamovi file and the Excel sheet. You can either import and for deselecting a study I have given the command in the chat box which is row bracket then exclamation mark is equal to which row you want to deselect 